on tonight's show. Reporter Megan Selinski explains the process of getting the COVID-19 vaccine. We break down the new guest policy for residential students and give you the latest COVID-19 testing numbers. In 677 days, that's how long it's been since the Eastern baseball team has played at home. We'll tell you why and hear from their head coach on what to look forward to in this unprecedented season. Tonight on the March 11th edition of ETV News. everyone, I'm Tyler Madden, and thank you so much for joining us. We'll have for you the latest COVID-19 testing numbers from campus in a moment. But first, the process of getting the COVID-19 vaccine is one that has been under much debate. Reporter Megan Slinsky tells us why in tonight's Top Story. It has been one year since the first COVID-19 case has been found here in Connecticut, and now we may be finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. The coronavirus vaccine has been highly anticipated for millions of residents in Connecticut. Those who are currently eligible to receive the vaccine include individuals who are over the age 55, healthcare personnel, residents and staff of long-term care facilities, and staff members of congregate settings, which include child care providers and school staff members. East Region of Harvard Healthcare, I think we've given out 17,000 vaccine doses uh, since we started on December 14th. Here in Wyndham, we're currently doing three days a week vaccinating about a thousand people a week. This week, Hartford Healthcare opened a vaccine mega center in Foxwoods Casino, allowing 800 to 1,000 people to be vaccinated a day. Here in Willimantic, Wyndham Hospital is currently administering the COVID-19 vaccine to eligible CT residents. We are committed to the Wyndham community uh, at large, the whole catchment area, to have a place convenient to them to get a vaccine. Students and staff of the Eastern community are patiently awaiting their vaccine appointments as the university is currently operating in their third semester of classes during the pandemic. Well, students in general, like healthy students, not on any medicines, not immunocompromised, really we're probably looking at about May that the vaccine will roll out for that age group. Dr. Joseph Breton, the university's medical director of student health services, hopes that individuals will consider the benefits of the vaccine. We do not know the long-term effects of the vaccine. I think the important thing is we do know what COVID can do to people, right? And we do know that it, it can, in, in certain groups, it has a very high mortality rate, uh, meaning that it can kill you. You really have to weigh the benefit and the risk of who you are against the vaccine and the unknowns of the vaccine. Those that have received the vaccine claim that the pros outweigh the cons. I had second thoughts about getting the second one just because of the side effects were so bad. It's better to get the shot than to get COVID. <laughs> to make an appointment for the vaccine with Hartford HealthCare, go to mychartplus.org. Reporting from Wyndham Hospital, I'm Megan Selensky with ETV News. The most recent COVID-19 numbers were released Tuesday, and for the second week in a row, there were zero reported cases from the testing done here on campus. Testing includes residential students and any other Eastern community members who want to test. 1,392 tests were performed last week, making that 8,292 tests that have been conducted since everyone returned to campus in January. Eastern's Department of Housing has released an updated guest policy in residence halls. Sammy Honeywell breaks down what that new policy means for students. Eastern's Housing and Residential Life Department recently made a change to their housing policy. Originally, students were not allowed to have guests from anyone except for those living in their hall until now. 
residential students will be able to register one uh, guest uh, that they'll be able to sign into their respective residence halls, uh, you know, to visit, you know, during specified uh, hours of the day. With vaccines being rapidly distributed, policies are being restructured for residential students. What the policy basically is, is that um, we know that uh, this year has been uh, pretty trying, you know, on students not being able to engage with one another um, as they have been uh, in previous years. Uh, and all of that is is really, you know, out of an abundance of caution, you know, as it pertains to trying to minimize the spread of COVID. At this point in time, Eastern's COVID infection rate on campus is very low, almost next to zero, which makes Eastern believe that they are able to slowly begin returning back to normal. I think from a from an engagement level, uh, from an, a you know just a support level, uh, students also need to have you know an opportunity to meet with friends, talk with friends. So, you know, from a social perspective, I think it's extremely beneficial. Residential hall staff are now having to check student IDs when guests arrive to the hall. While this process seems ideal for some halls, it is nearly impossible for others. Low-rise residents have direct access to their room without going through a lobby. Meanwhile, halls like High Rise, Schaefer, and Noble have multiple entries and exits into the building. So at first, I was kind of like, why are we doing this? Like, it doesn't make sense to me to allow guests. Um, but then I realized they were probably sneaking guests in anyway, so <laughs> if we're being honest. Um, so at least this way, we have a record of it. Uh, visitation hours are between uh, 10 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. each day. Uh, students just need to come, show their ID, scan their ID, uh, and then they're able to, to visit uh, in the room. Although each hall has their own way on how they'll mandate this policy, students are still expected to follow it to keep Eastern's campus and community safe. I'm Sammy Honeywell, ETV News. There have been several cars entering campus with the intention of breaking into cars parked on campus, according to an email sent out by Eastern Police. They ask students to always remember to keep your doors locked and to hide valuables if you have to keep them in your car. Eastern's Housing and Residential Life Office sent out an email last week about next year's housing. Students must submit the deposit and fill out the application by March 31st in order to be included in Eastern's 2021-2022 housing selection. Students who do not complete the application by March 31st are not able to participate in the roommate selection process. Students with a paid deposit and a housing application will participate in roommate matching that is set to begin on Wednesday, April 14th and go until the following Wednesday, April 21st. The Lawyers Collaborative for Diversity is offering its fourth summer internship pipeline program for college students of color. This is a paid, virtual, 10-week-long summer program of webinars hosted by various law firms, local law schools, and legal organizations. To be eligible to apply, students have to be entering their sophomore, junior, or senior year at an accredited college or university. The application deadline is Friday, March 19th, and students can apply by visiting led-ne.org. One of the newest groups starting to receive their COVID vaccines are teachers and child care workers. Beginning on March 1st, they were included in the eligible vaccination group. Governor Ned Lamont is hoping schools follow this procedure of single-use signups as more pop-up clinics are opening for educators and support staff. To get the latest COVID-19 vaccine info from the state, you can head to portal.ct.gov slash vaccination portal. The pandemic has taken a toll on all of us here on campus, and some Eastern students are looking to raise awareness in a unique way. Reporter Connor O'Malley tells us how. Mental illness affects everyone in one form or another. Whether you suffer from a form of mental illness or know family members or peers who do, proper mental health awareness and support is a key part in improving the quality of life for those who are inflicted. A group of students here at Eastern are helping raise awareness and doing their part in promoting positive mental health. Meet the Valley Boys Ride, a group of Eastern students with a passion for the promotion of positive mental health. It's something that affects everyone in one way or another, and you know, for me personally, I lost my, my brother and grandmother to, to suicide, so it's something that um, I think about every day, and I just want to be able to help anyone in need. These students have taken an extreme athletic challenge and turned it into a journey for a worthy cause. We're starting in Greenwich, Connecticut, and riding the East Coast Greenway all the way down to the Outer Banks. This 600-plus mile biking trip will follow the Greenway Spine Route from Greenwich to Norfolk, Virginia, and complementary routes from Norfolk to Outer Banks in North Carolina. This type of biking excursion will require a considerable amount of conditioning and preparation. 
Well, so right now we're in hockey season, so we haven't been able to bike as much as outside as we want to, but we've been stationary biking, and now with the weather being nice, we're looking forward to getting out there and putting in some work. The Valley Boys Ride have also chosen an organization for which their ride will support. So we're currently working with the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Connecticut, and all the proceeds that we make from this trip are going to be going to that organization. For these students, the psychological impact of mental illness outweighs the journey's physical impact. The pain and agony we're going to be putting our bodies through is nothing compared to those who suffer with mental illness on a daily basis. The Valley Boys will begin their ride in May and plan to complete their trip within 30 days. For ETV News, I'm Connor O'Malley. When we come back, we'll take a look at more headlines from around Connecticut and the country. We'll be right back. Why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. In a 64-33 vote, the Senate confirmed Miguel Cardona as Secretary of Education. The former public school teacher from here in Connecticut will help guide school districts to safely provide in-person instruction. This is teachers' unions in some places across the country are fighting reopening plans. President Biden has pledged to reopen most schools by May within his first 100 days in office. Cardona, whose family is originally from Puerto Rico, began his career as a fourth-grade teacher in Meriden, the same district where he attended school. He soon became a principal and then assistant superintendent of the district before being named the state's commissioner of education. In just hours after Cardona was confirmed, he and fellow teacher First Lady Dr. Jill Biden traveled here to Connecticut where they visited the city of Meriden. Natural hair discrimination is now illegal here in Connecticut. Governor Ned Lamont signed the Crown Act into law. The bill prohibits discrimination based on hairstyles that are commonly associated with African American and Hispanic people. It was recently approved by both chambers of the Connecticut General Assembly. A New London mother is the main suspect in the death of her four-year-old boy Sunday. 33-year-old Tiffany Ferrado has been charged with murder and risk of injury to a minor. Police responded to reports of a woman with a bat vandalizing cars in an apartment parking lot Sunday morning. As police were investigating, Ferrado reportedly told them she had injured her son. While doing a welfare check on the child, officers on the scene made a shocking discovery. Entered the apartment, he located a four-year-old male who appeared to be in some type of medical distress. He immediately felt for a pulse, found no pulse, started CPR on him and contacted the fire department for the fire department's response. They were there in no time at all while he was, my officer was doing CPR on the child. Um, once we uh, transported the child to the hospital, the hospital staff diligently tried to work him back, but unfortunately they were not able to get him back. Parado is being held on a million dollars bond. A Quinnipiac University student is out of the hospital after his roommate allegedly attacked him with a knife. Police say they've been arguing about a light. The victim says the other student began punching him while he was sleeping early Friday morning and cut his neck during the altercation. Campus police say officers negotiated with the roommate and were able to take the weapon. The alleged attacker is suspended from school pending an investigation, but has not been arrested as of Friday night. Colorado's governor is weighing in on Boulder's massive party that turned violent and destructive Saturday. Officers responded to a gathering of hundreds of people near the University of Colorado's Boulder campus. Most partygoers were without masks and not social distancing. A car was flipped and some people set off fireworks. Tuesday, Governor Jared Polis said he understands college students want to party, but they can't now because of the pandemic. I, I'm hopeful that uh, no one gets COVID from the result of this past weekend's massless, uh, thoughtless rager in, in Boulder. Uh, but sadly, given where we are with the virus, that's unlikely. It's, it's highly likely that some transmission occurred. Three SWAT officers were injured during the incident when they were hit with bricks and rocks. 
CU Boulder said any student who engaged in acts of violence towards law enforcement or first responders will be expelled. Investigators say they are identifying people seen on video who are breaking the law. The U.S. World and News report is out its 2021-2022 rankings of the best states, and the winner is the state of Washington. It pushed to number one overall after ranking the top ten in infrastructure, education, economy, fiscal stability, and health care categories. The best states' rankings evaluate quality of life across a broad range of categories. Washington Governor Jay Inslee cheered his state's win, knowing that this is the second time in three years Washington has been number one. Minnesota took second place in this year's best states rankings, and Utah was third. New Hampshire and Idaho ranked fourth and fifth, respectively. At the bottom of the list, Louisiana, which ranked 50th, and Connecticut came in at 20th. When we come back, we'll hear from the Eastern baseball coach on what to expect from the team this season. We'll be right back. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Welcome back. Eastern Spring Sports are starting to get back into things as the men's lacrosse team opened action last week in a dominant performance versus Mitchell College, 19-4. They followed that win with a win over St. Joseph's, 8-2. The track and field team has competed in two meets at Coast Guard Academy with strong performances from both teams. Women's lacrosse also opened their season at Mitchell College with another dominating win of 23-3. Softball is also currently hosting Alberta's Magnus. Fall sports are expected to compete this spring, so it will be a very busy couple of months for Eastern Athletics. The baseball team season is also set to begin this week. With COVID-19 cutting their season short last year, they didn't get to play a single home game, meaning we have to go all the way back to May 4th of 2019 for the last home baseball game for Eastern against Westcon 677 days ago. I spoke with head coach Brian Ham yesterday and asked him what his message to his team has been getting ready for this unusual season. Here's part of our interview. It's a continuation of uh, messaging that we've had starting um, back in March and then obviously starting back in, in when I um, arrived at Eastern in terms of what we're trying to build um, within our, our team culture and add to um, the Eastern baseball program and the athletics department uh, in that we're doing our best with whatever situation is in front of us. And, and we've learned a lot from having to deal with the changing climate and circumstances and in many situations that are out of our control in the past year due to COVID uh, and to learn to do that together and to learn from each other and to support each other um, and to accept what is out of our control and to make the most of it. Uh, and we've done a really good job of that as a team in the past year. And we've done a really good job of that this spring. And, and that's what I'm most proud of uh, with our players and coaches is how hard they've worked, how dedicated they've been, how much they've honored um, the COVID policies that we have at the university to stay healthy and to keep our community healthy. Um, that has taken um, a lot of effort on everybody's account. and. Um, I'm really proud of our team for being able to do that. Uh, and I'm really excited for the guys to have the opportunity to compete tomorrow and to play again. Um, we're fortunate that we're able to do that. Um, we lost part of our season last year. The fall lost their season. Winter lost part of their season. And it's really nice just to have athletes back on fields competing and playing together on a more regular basis. Um, without having to worry as much as we had to about um, losing a season due to COVID and all the fears and anxieties that are associated with that. Um, so tomorrow, honestly, I'm going to tell them, listen, have fun, compete, uh, and enjoy the moment. Because one of the things that we've taken away from the past year is we realize um, how quickly things uh, can go away and, and how quickly um, we can lose 
an opportunity that we may have taken for granted. Um, so I'm really proud of our guys, and I, I'm thrilled to get to see them. You can watch all Eastern home sporting events streaming on littleeast.tv. And to get the latest info, head on over to GoWarriorAthletics.com and follow ETV Sports on Instagram at ECSU Athletics. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. All of us at ETV News hope you continue to stay safe and healthy. We'll see you next time.